Uh, Brian, there's another option we talked about inside our course, Electrical Pollution Fix. It's called MOCA. Um, and then there's a third option called Internet Over Power Line. I'll let you talk about these options. They're not the best option, but they're a good alternative to Wi-Fi is the, is the way uh, we put it. So uh, MOCA yeah. and then Powerlet, uh, <laughs> power line over uh, Ethernet or Internet over power line adapters. Yeah. So those, those two uh, options besides normal Ethernet, you know, network connections, which is all connected straight to the, to the router that's connected to a switch. And then from there, it goes out to the rest of the house. If you don't have that or have the capability to do that, then Mocha adapters, what that is, is it's coaxial cable that was already run in the building. If you have that, you can see if it's still connected. And if it is connected, um, you can get these Mocha adapters. And how do you see if it's connected? Well, you may have to hire a... Uh, a, a specialist that's called, you know, called like they call themselves like low voltage, like a low voltage company. And, uh, and you can have them come out and test to see if the, if the uh, coaxial cables are, are connected, but if they are connected, you can get these Mocha adapters. And what it does is it plugs right into your uh, coaxial. And then there's like this little box that has an adapter on it and it has an ethernet port. And so you connect that Ethernet port to your uh, network, like usually your, your router, even if it's your Wi-Fi router, it's going to send a wired signal into this Mocha um, adapter, and then it's going to inject the frequency of the Internet, you know, all of the data onto those lines. And those lines are going to, wherever they go throughout the house, and you have another uh, location where you have the coaxial port that's typically for like television, Cable television is what they've installed them for in the past, but you can use that same same line, and it's actually already grounded and shielded too. So it's a it's a very good option if you can do that. It's really fast. It's grounded. It's shielded. It'll send data through there. Doesn't cause any dirty electricity, and it's shielded. And then anywhere that you have a coaxial port, you can uh, put another one of those things in and plug it in, and then take the Ethernet cable from the device to your device so and plug it into your computer or an adapter to your phone or or whatever so that's a really good option another one with the same principles is internet over power line adapters now i only recommend these when you're pretty well shielded from electric fields or you and you know and you have you know it could be that you possibly have like metal clad conduit in your house or in the office where you're at so if you have metal clad in your office you can opt to get a wired connection through the power lines and it's the same principle you plug this device into the wall and then it connects via ethernet cable to the router that that provides the internet and it injects the internet into all of the power lines and there's freaks. So that means there's frequencies that are going onto the power lines. Sometimes those frequencies will raise dirty electricity because they are different, uh, different uh, frequencies, different spikes of dirty electricity uh, when it, when it's doing that and it's injecting that onto the, to the power line. So that's why I say you have to mitigate electric fields in this instance, or you need to have metal clad conduit because it can elevate dirty electricity. And I've, I, I think, you know, I've heard of some models that elevate it significantly. I've only seen models that have gone like 200 gram Stetzer units or two to 300, um, you know, two to 300 on the uh, millivolts on the line EMI meter. So I haven't seen anything that's like, oh my gosh, it's just like we put solar panels on the house. Like, no, I've never seen that. <laughs> but uh, but the key thing is like, it's very convenient if you want to avoid Wi-Fi, or especially if you're uh, if you're sensitive and you and Wi-Fi really bothers you, um, or if you have it like right next to your, um, if you have the router right next to you and you can't move it or something like that. So just, you can turn the settings off on the router or put a cage over the router. And then, uh, you can, uh, you can 
still have like a really fast connection. And they're making these at two gigabytes per second now, these internet over power line adapters. So they're like, uh, they're basically like fiber speeds uh, for those. And I use, you know, I use one in my office or sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll, I'll use one um, if in Airbnbs and things like that. And it works really well. But you still have to use an Ethernet grounding adapter kit with any of these setups, even the Ethernet network setup. So you want to you want to have a Cat Seven or Cat Six shielded cable, and then there's an Ethernet grounding adapter kit you can get on either Amazon or on the ElectroHealth.com website. And so if you, if you go there, you know, it includes like an extra shielded cable that's like really short and then you plug that in and then you have another shielded cable that you use to plug your computer in and the other part goes into a ground prong uh, with two dummy uh, hot and neutral prongs that, that don't go anywhere in the plug. So there's a ground prong that goes to the ground and then, you know, it's a three prong device, but it's the hot and neutral don't go anywhere. It just goes in there for stability. So that grounds the sheath on all the Ethernet cables. And uh, if you do get the Internet over Powerline adapters, you don't want to use the cables that came with it. You want to still purchase separate cables because the cables that came with it are not shielded. And the brand that I like on those is the TP-Link. And that, and I like the two, the two gigabytes per second. That's the one I've tested that's not very high in dirty electricity. Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy, you know, I am the co-creator of the EMF circle along with my colleague, Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. What you saw today, this short video is a preview of the longer interview that we did for our circle members. Every month we have a masterclass like one of these or a Q&A session with me and Brian most of the time. So you get personal support and attention on your EMF reduction reduction journey. So if you want to reduce EMF because you are personally sensitive or you're just trying to take precautionary measures to better your health and minimize the risk associated with wireless and other types of EMFs, then the EMF circle is the place to be. We have a ton of archives now. We have several months worth of Q&As that you can listen back to. Everything is pre-record is recorded. You can either join live or just listen to the replay. So we have a cars master class. We have a pr free protection masterclass uh, uh, also that we did, and we're going to have several other masterclasses moving forward. So we hope that you join us inside the EMF circle. Just visit emfcircle.com or click the link under the video to join us. I hope to see you then.